Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers for whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to Viewers Anonymous. Yo, what's going on? I am Scooch Bronson. And I am S. Foster. And this is the Viewers Anonymous Podcast. What's going on with you, buddy? Man, I am ecstatic. Man. Nice. You know what I'm saying? You hear me? Like, I am so happy right now. I don't know how many episodes where I was so excited to fucking do. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, like, dude, I've been thinking about this shit all day. I don't even know how we're going to do this shit, but like, I mean, I had some other stuff I had to do today um, that was, you know, an interesting process I had to do today. You know, we'll speak more on that uh, later on. But, uh, but man, I'm, I'm, man, I'm happy, man, in a good space. Man, how are you feeling? Man, um, I'm excited too, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, I, I was waiting to do this one because um, I think this may be the first time that we might wholly disagree and not have one movie in common. Uh, oh yeah, um, I already know we ain't gonna have nothing we, in common. When we do a top five, so, I know, I I know it's <laughs> it's too wide of a range, and then I yeah. already know, like yo, but and then I had okay, 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 we can't do this right now because we got we got some more <laughs> stuff, but but yeah, man, I am I am completely excited for this, man. This is gonna be some fun shit, man. Yeah, 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 for sure, man. I mean, you know what I'm saying, and then on top of that, man, like you know. Um, so everybody know, you know what I'm saying? I, I got the, the OnlyFans joint and, uh, you know what I'm saying? This past week I went out, uh, linked up with the homeboy gang, you know what I'm saying? He back in town and, uh, shit, we went out, man. You know what I'm saying? We kicked it for a little bit and, uh, you know, I was talking to a few people who, you know what I'm saying? also work on and do OnlyFans and, <clears throat> excuse me. You know what I'm saying? I learned a lot. I got to asking a lot of questions and getting some great advice and information. So, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be a, a fun experience from here on out, man. Yeah, man. I saw I saw on, on the book, man, that Gan said that y'all too was back at it, man. I meant to ask yeah. you about that, man. But that's, yeah, that's a man. great thing to hear and see, man, because, mm-hmm. you know, y'all had, you know, a pretty good chemistry, man, on, on the mm-hmm. pod and everything. Ended abruptly, but you know what I'm saying? That type of shit happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, yeah. mine ended abruptly. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't know it was mm-hmm. gonna, gonna happen that way. But, um, but rest in peace to my guy. But, but it, it was good to see that, man. It was good to see that, man. Glad y'all had fun and linked back up. Oh yeah, for sure, man. And then you know, um, you know, what I'm saying he he back at it. He got a pod out called the Bad Husband Podcast. So you know, what I'm saying he doing his thing with that. And um, you know, what I'm saying it's just it's, it's good to see him. You know, what I'm saying back in his element, doing what he do and. You know, so we had some fun, man. You know, we went out, got to see um, some beautiful women, and it was all right. Yeah, man. I mean, you can't complain right. about that. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but so, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this is the second episode of the week, and everybody knows, man, we're listening to this. Is what we do. <clears throat> we are getting into, you know what I'm saying, what we watching. And uh, y'all got to be, you know what I'm saying? And y'all got to be patient with us, man. Our soundboard kind of messed up right now, so we don't got no sounds. But, you know what I'm saying, we definitely going to at least let y'all know what segment we in like we always do. So, you know what I'm saying, starting it off, man, what you got this week, brother? Oh, man, what I got for what we watching, man, this is a show I started, damn, was it last year? Because I think they've been on their game, man, because uh, the second season came out, I think, last week. Um uh, the first season, I mean, excuse me, the second season came back out. Show that I started, man, it was, uh, it's called The Flight Attendant. I don't know if you heard about it, HBO Max show. Mm-hmm. Um, you got your girl from, I think, oh, what was it? What's that one fucking show? It's not how I met your Big mother. Bang Theory. Was, um, Big Bang Theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her name, I think her the name girl, is, is, is Kate, hey, something like Katie, or uh, is, is Katie. Kuka, Kukok, or something like that? Yeah, yeah, it's something like that. I can't pronounce what yeah. her last name is. But uh, long story short, man, like, she's a flight attendant. Um, She was, you know, pretty wild girl, get drunk all the time, and she ended up 
uh, meeting this guy on a plane. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, obviously on a plane because she's a flight attendant, but she ended up going going to the hotel room with a dude. She got wasted, woke up, dude dead, throat slit, right? So, like, the whole first season, like, dude is, like, popping up, like, in her head. Mm-hmm. Like, he would just pop up at random times. Like, she was, like, black out. And, like, he would just pop up at random times. And so he helped her solve his murder, but she also was, like, a murder suspect. So all of this shit happened first season. Second season come <laughs> around. Now she's seeing herself when she, like, black out. Like, she's seeing, because she, now she's sober. She's been sober for a year. Um, And uh, one person, played by Rosa Perez, last season she was doing some illegal shit, so now she's hiding from the government and shit. And, like, so this season, like, she's hiding out in Iceland. Um, Rosa Perez is, but but the old girl, she is like now like kind of working with like the FBI or some shit, like on some secret shit. But like it's a lot of little stuff going around, man. It's kind of like a comedy type of a mystery type of show. Mm-hmm. Um but you know, it's it's a good it's a good show. I mean, it's it's not like the best show on HBO Max, but right. you know, you know how I am. Like if I start something and it was pretty good, second season come out, I gotta see what they come up with. So that's what I'm watching right now, man. I'm watching um, The Flight Attendant, the second season on HBO Max. Oh, yeah. See, I want to check that out now. Um, so for me, man, I didn't. I don't got no show or nothing. I got a movie, man. It's on Netflix. Um, it's the prequel to uh, a movie we did not too long ago, Army of the Dead. And it's called Army of Thieves. And because okay. um, I, did, I, I didn't know nothing about it. I thought Army of the, of the Dead was just, you know what I'm saying, just a standalone movie. <clears throat> but my mom was watching it, you know what I'm saying? She told me about it. And um I had walked I had walked up to uh walked in on it, she was watching Army of the Dead. And I was like, Man, this was a good movie, right? She was like, Yeah, I just got done watching the prequel. I was like, The prequel? She was like, Yeah, so I'm like I ain't never heard of no prequel. So she told me about Army of Thieves, I get to watching it. So the um the in the Army of Dead, the dude that's the um that they got open in the vault. The, the the foreign dude that opens the vaults and everything, I forgot what his name was, but basically, um, it's it's his story. So they got, um, it, it's so it's so weird, bro. Like they got the his story, so it's like his origin story or whatever. And they go through how he became a you know what I'm saying like a lock uh, um a lock master and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying how he idolized this one guy who was like a maker of vaults and stuff like that and safes so you know what i'm saying um in the midst of everything going on like you know what i'm saying he get with this team they recruit him on this team because he like one of the best of course he's the best safe cracker in the world so they recruit him on the team and then when they recruit him you know what i'm saying they going to get these vaults it's like four different vaults that's like the the most uh like difficult vault to open so they going, they setting up, you know what I'm saying, like all these elaborate schemes and stuff to get to these vaults. And then he's cracking these mugs like one by one. He's the only person who could crack these joints. So the last one is like the most elaborate, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's the it's like the the big dog. And it's supposed to be the one that the dude who made the uh the dude who made the vault locked himself inside. So that's the one that they looking for. And I guess it got some other stuff in it too. But so, you know, what I'm saying they go in and then I guess um, whatever is in there is like real, real valuable. And they find the vault and he's trying to open it, but they don't get a chance to open it because the police end up catching on to him. So not only do the police get to I mean, start catching on to him, the, it was a few members of their team who basically turned their back on them and, you know, what I'm saying traded them. So. They get chased down that toward the end. They get chased down or whatever, and then him and his girl they kind of fall in love. She give herself up so he can escape, but he got like all this money so he can escape, and so he ends up coming to America, and then he uh he owns like a a sap, um a lock picking business or whatever, and that's basically the end of it. But throughout the whole movie, the funny thing is is that they showing the the zombie apocalypse in the beginning. So, so everything you see in Army of the Dead is like on Army of Thieves. You see, in all of it start. So, like while all, while they doing while they going around doing all of this safe cracking and 
elaborate plans, Stephen bank robbing type stuff. On the news, they showing like motherfuckers getting eaten in the middle of the street by quote unquote zombies. So they saying like, is this you know saying like the dude on the news like, is this a real thing? Is this something that we have to worry about? Like, is this going to become a pandemic and da da da? But they showing like the zombies get eaten, and then he having like these he have like these night terrors or whatever. By watching that, he having night terrors about the zombies coming to get him. So eventually, you know what I'm saying, at at the end of it, um, Batista's character and then the, the one girl that was uh that he was in love with or whatever, they end up coming to the get the, you know what I'm saying, to the lockpick store, and then they asking him, do he know how to crack the safe? But it's the safe that he found that, you know what I'm saying, that the dude had died in with the uh I guess it had like a diamond or something, and I forgot what was in there. But <clears throat> that's the um that's the safe that you know what I'm saying that they tried to get him to crack. So that's how it ends up leading into Army of the Dead. But it's called Army of Thieves, it's on Netflix. It's real good. It's a great prequel because it's not one of those things to where it's is leading directly into the next movie, but it's definitely leading into the next movie. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. That's the joint that got Amara Hardwick in it, right? Yeah, Army of the Dead is the one we that's the one oh, we okay. did, Army of the Dead. Now the one before that don't have none of them in it. It just got the dude that pick out a locks. He the safe cracker. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I think his name no, I'm one I I don't know why I want to call him Ludwig. His name ain't Ludwig, it's something else. He he he's a foreign dude, like he's like European or something like that for sure. But I forgot what his name was in the movie. But that's the one that they end up getting when they had to go on that mission to, uh when they was in Vegas. And they went through the thing or whatever. Remember, they was uh, trying to get upstairs, and they said like the whatever the place, wherever the place was, that's where the king zombie was. I mean, the queen zombie was. Yo, I'm gonna put it to you this way, yo. Yeah, I don't know who you're mistaken, but we never did Army of Dead. Yes, we did. So, <laughs> no, we did not. I never seen mm-hmm. that movie. Army of it with Dave Batista with the zombies. I've never seen that. Bro, I'm telling you, it's it, it's on there. Hold on, go ahead. But I'm gonna look. But I'm telling you, you did Army of the Dead, bro. It might, you know what it might be. It might be when we like talked about like some kind of horror shit or something. Mm-hmm. You know what? It was when we did um, we, you did that list with me when I did oh, one of the horror joints, right. and that was on your list. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it was on. It was on. I, say, I know. List. I know. We talked about it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on your list when we did the um the horror movie joints. Yeah, yeah. So we never like did Army of the Dead on here. Like I can't type in you know viewers anonymous Army of the Dead. You're not gonna find it because it was right. You okay. you talk, so It was right. on your list. Yeah, it was on your list. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, we we do so much potting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you talked yeah. about it though. You talked about yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. When well, we did the horror, we did the horror list. Uh, um, yeah. on twenty eight. Yep. Yep, that's what that was. Okay. Okay. Cool. I'm making sure. Okay, you're right. So yeah, but um, definitely, like, if you get a chance to watch it, check both of those out, man. Um, start with Army of Thieves. That's the that's the prequel, and then start with uh, Army of the Dead. They both good movies, of course, but it's nice how they, you know, what I'm saying how they set everything up on that one. So, um, man, listen, you know, <sighs> oh, also yeah. real quick, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know if I had said I, I already watched Atlanta or whatever, or I started Atlanta, but I have started Atlanta and it's been, I know everybody been killing it. And I probably done said this before on what we watching, but Atlanta is fire this season, bro. They doing a lot of, um, they doing a lot of different, you know what I'm saying? Looks for the show. And I, I enjoy it. Um, so yeah, check out Atlanta, check out Army of Thieves. Now let's get to it, man. This is what we've been waiting man, for. Hold up. What's man. up? Before you start, man. Before What's up, you start, man? What's up? Listen. I want to fight, man. Like, why? This ain't fair, yo. Like, this was yo, this was so fucking hard to do. Yeah. And it's like, I, now, okay, so we're gonna have to let people in because we mm-hmm. we didn't go over this. So are we gonna like kind of like do like a whole little thing where we're just gonna run down some shit and then do the top five, or are we gonna do like do the top five in between talking about some shit and then go to four or what? Because it is is like it's literally what you said, and I don't think mm-hmm. people understand how true that statement was. You know, you kind of can compare it to 
Now, obviously, it could be situations like this. I use a basketball analogy for everybody, right? Yeah. So some people, there are arguments where people say, what was the better draft? 1984, Mm -hmm. 1996, or Mm -hmm. 2003, right? Because when you go back and you look at the players that were drafted in those years, you know, 84, you got, you know what I'm saying? You got um, Michael Jordan, um, uh, Barkley. Um, who else were some of those players? Like my mind, I'm having a brain freeze right now. But 1996, you had Allen Iverson, Ray Allen, Kobe. Steve Nash, Kobe, Kevin like Garnett. Was, Kevin Garnett. It was yeah. just a whole bunch of people in 2003. You had Dwayne Melo, Wade, Wayne, uh, uh, LeBron, LeBron James, you had Darko Milicic. Yeah, like get the fuck out of here. Man. <laughs> he the, he, hey, don't do that. He was the first one to win a ring. Got that uh, draft class. He, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because he was With on the that Detroit team. Yeah. So. <laughs> so it's it's kind of like that, but yo, like 1999, yo, it was so difficult, man, putting together just a five, a five, mm-hmm. yo. But I was like, yo, I, I want to fight schools, Bronson, yo, for, for putting it to five, because I'm telling you, this was tough. But the great thing about this pod, though, is we're gonna be able to talk about a lot of movies, man. Um, a lot of movies that was very impactful. There was movies that really kind of changed the world, but I think one of the, the the biggest things that we wanted to point out, and we mentioned this countless times, was the fact that I look, we don't know because you know I don't really know anybody in the movie movie industry. Right. I don't know if people really was thinking like, yo, <clears throat> like when the year two thousand hit, like we don't know if the calendar's gonna work. We don't know if the internet gonna work. Man, like it was a crazy year. I'm telling you, so it was just kind of like I don't know if these movies just, they just greenlit a lot of fucking movies. And it's like, yo, we're going to push all this shit out because we don't know if the movie industry is going to be the same when the year 2000 hit. I don't know what happened, but all of the movies that came out this th- that year is fucking amazing, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, 1999 was amazing. So how you how you want to do it? I need to know how we're gonna do this format for this one because, I, man, ah oh man, I got a lot to say. <laughs> okay, so this is a you know what I'm saying this is a viewers anonymous first. We're letting the people in, you know what I'm saying on basically what would be, um, our version of you know what I'm saying pre production. So um, man, listen, let's just go ahead. Let's talk about the movies that year. Let's uh, you know what I'm saying talk about the year as well, because that was a crazy year, not just for movies, but, you know what I'm saying, for everybody involved. And then, you know what I'm saying, let's do our top five lives. Okay, cool, cool. So I'm not going to mention, uh, so while, do, well, while doing this, I'm not going to mention anything that's in my five. But but I think it's only fair to start this thing off on how this conversation even started. Sure. So... How this conversation even started for our loyal listeners who has been there with us, you know, since the beginning and all that shit. We appreciate y'all. Salute to y'all. All the people that has came along through the ride where you pick certain podcasts, whatever you do, we appreciate you listening. Yeah. But this is how it all started. So we was this is before we got as organized as we are now. Like we was kind of freelancing at this point. And so we were just like, yo, what movie you want to do? You was like, shit, I don't know. Black Witch Project. So we mm-hmm. just broke that shit down. So we rewatched the shit, and we had so much fun just making fun of the fucking movie. But at the same time, the bright light that came out of that was we realized not only how Blood Witch Project within itself changed the whole industry, like it completely yeah, changed indeed. movies forever. But at the same time, we we got into this conversation of movies that came out in 1999. So let's mm-hmm. start with, you know, a brief little thing on Black Witch Project. If, if people never listen to that episode, this movie completely changed everything because right. it made us question, like, first of all, was it real? <laughs> like, at the time, there was no internet. And like, there, I mean, it was internet, but it's not like it is today. There was no social media, none of that shit. So watching the Black Witch Project, like, in 1999, where I was like, I was what, 14, I thought the shit was real. You know what I'm saying? So, but what I mean by change the industry was where people was like, yo, fuck the sound. Uh, fuck the whole look that we're going to have. We got one camera. 
We got one mm-hmm. camera. We got no mics. We really only lighting that we got is the light from the sun and the light from the camera. And we just gonna put something together that is a folk legend and it changed movies forever. You know, it started the whole thing of like people using one camera. It started the whole thing of mm-hmm. people um like when it comes to uh, the paranormal activity, I would think paranormal activity never would have started without Black Witch Project. So what are your right. thoughts revisiting like the Blair Witch Project and how this whole 1999 conversation started. Well, the Blair Witch Project in itself, you know, so like you said, it's um, it's such a good movie only because you know, what I'm saying of how iconic it is. Like people, especially people who don't do film or like you know, what I'm saying like don't do stuff like YouTube or nothing like that, they don't really understand like the importance of it because they weren't just using a camera; they was using like uh, like a home video camera. Some stuff yep. you'll see like with uh <laughs> some stuff you'll see like your dad by and then you know what I'm saying he recording special moments in your life. So like yeah. and then on top of that, like the way that they made it, it wasn't really like a movie, it was made at like as if it was a documentary. Mm-hmm. Or as if it was like the making of a documentary. And so in between that and then in between everything else, you didn't even like you didn't even catch the fact that the whole time, this is all that they're using. They're not using boom mics. They're not using, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, they're not using special lighting. They're not using CGI. None of that. It's it's literally a a film with three people in it and they making everything work. Like, ain't no blood in it. Ain't no special effects. Nothing. Like, it's just literally like them using this camera to make a movie. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, the reason that that's so important is because, you know, like you said, with um, with Paranormal Activity, for them to do what they did with that movie, right, people forget that that's what Blair Witch was. Like, people was really believing, like, this really happened. Mm-hmm. They thinking, like, this is found footage, like, because th- that was the, you know, so, like, that was the rollout for the movie. Like, they found this footage, and, you know what I'm saying, like, it got turned in, you know what I'm saying, they, well, I don't want to say footage, but they... The rollout was they found a camera in the woods, and this is everything that was on the camera in the woods. They turned it into a movie, and then they put it in theaters, and, like, people was going crazy for this movie because it was like, hold on, they did what? They found a camera in the woods. (laughs) And then you sitting there, like, when you seeing the trailer for it, in your head, you ain't even thinking, like, well, if they found in the woods, how the fuck they make a trailer for this shit? Like, and and you know what I'm saying? It don't even come to your mind. You just see this thing. You like, oh, these motherfuckers got killed by ghosts for real. So... You see, you see all this crazy footage, <laughs> and then when you see the movie, it blow your mind even more because it's like, man, this shit really happened. And you said you was what? How old were you when when this came out? I was I was fourteen. Okay, I was eleven. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I went to go see this with my cousins, bro. So, like, imagine me being eleven. You know what I'm saying? Like the scary movies I'm used to is like Michael Myers, Freddy. You know what I'm saying? By that time, you like, man, that shit ain't real. But you see this shit, <laughs> you like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> this shit blew my mind because I was sitting there like, oh, man, this shit is crazy. Like, how are they putting, like, how did they put this shit in theaters knowing good and damn well? Like, these people really died over this. So then, you know what I'm saying? Like, didn't nobody do no interviews for the movie. You ain't never heard of the actors. You never seen these people before. It wasn't no press for none of this. The movie, wasn't, it wasn't none of that. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Usually when you see that, you'll see, you know what I'm saying? Like back then they would do like um, entertainment the night, have a little thing or whatever. And then they'd be interviewing the actors in the movie. And then, you know what I'm saying? Or um, uh, uh, Byron Allen used to do the late night joint where he'd be talking to the people, you know what I'm saying? In certain movies like this one, bro, it wasn't none of that. It wasn't no post press, no nothing. So it was like you, they, they really had you believing like this was real. And then like, until like I want to say like maybe two three years down the line, then that's when the whole thing come out about it. It came out about it being a hoax. So on top of all that, right? You also got to remember that this is 1999. You know what I'm saying? This is supposed to be like the end of the world. This is doomsday. And when 2000 hit, we all gonna die. Everybody is hoarding the water, <laughs> hoarding canned goods and boxed rice. Like we already on edge. So to get a movie like this is like man, what? You know what I'm saying? The whole Y2K phenomenon. Like, y'all thought COVID was bad, bro. When they was snatching up toilet paper, nigga. When they was, when Y2K hit, 
where you couldn't find nothing, bro. Like it was it was scarcity city. So um yeah, like that was the that was the, the, the one of the biggest movies of that year and the impact that it had was so crazy. So then to later on go down the line and paranormal activity comes out. You got to remember with that, like to me, I, I call it the Blair, the, the Blair generation, the Blair Witch of his generation, because not only did it have, you know, what I'm saying that same effect, but the Internet is out now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> so now they like before it even dropped and before they even do promo on it, you know, what I'm saying to be able to show you the trailer, they dropped a rollout where nigga, it started to become a story on the Internet. Yo, they got this. You know what I'm saying? They got these people and this dude, he got this video footage of his girl. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a ghost in their house. Da, da, da. And so like that was the that was the start of it. And then, you know, what I'm saying blogs was running with it. Then next thing you know, they put a, put the trailer out for it. And then the dope thing about them putting out that trailer is their trailer was just a scene in the movie. Yeah. All you seen was, you know what I'm saying? It, it come on it give you the date and the time. And then you just see two people laying in bed and then the covers get snatched off. And you was like, what the fuck is this? And then, you know what I'm saying? It, it tell you, like, true story. Da, da, da. you like, oh, snap. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, that really set precedent for a lot of stuff. And then it gave, you know what I'm saying? Like, it gave a, a new lane for movies, too. Because, like, if you think about this, um, what's the uh, what's the movie about the, the, the dudes in World War II where it was all shot on one, you know what I'm saying, like one camera, one 19, scene? Was seven, 1917? Yeah, it was something like that. Like, But it was, you know, remember, because um, I think, did we do that one? No, no, no. But I think you, I know we you talked spoke about, it, about it. Yeah, we yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about it. We definitely talked about it. But it's all like one giant scene. It ain't no cuts, no nothing. Yep. So it's like, you know what I'm saying, ain't no different angles, no none of that. Like, it's one scene so it's like you know what i'm saying like blair witch kind of opened a lane for all that create and, it, and it's really just a, a lane for creativity for people to you know what i'm saying kind of change the way movies are shot and you know what I'm saying the way movies are done um i even i even um i even liken it to um i gotta find the name of this movie um but it's uh what is that movie called? You know what I'm saying? I even I forgot what the one movie was, but it won a um it won a, it won a uh, Oscar or something like that. But you know what I'm saying? Like now they shooting movies with iPhones. Like no mm-hmm. no production cameras, no no, they shooting it with iPhones. Like and there's six movies out now that you can go look. One of them is called Tangerine. The other one is called Unsane. That's the one it was. Unsane. That's the one that they did where uh old girl was in the um mental asylum. It's another one called Nine Rides, uh Uneasy Lies the Mind, High Flying Bird, and then Romance. You know what I'm saying? Like, so these movies that were um that were made or whatever, all shot on iPhones. So, you know what I'm saying? To me, like, that's a that's a product of the Blair Witch Project being shot on, you know what I'm saying, like a, a regular camcorder. You know what I mean? So that really opened up the gate for a lot of different, um, a lot of different creative ways to, you know what I'm saying, shoot movies and, and bring film, you know what I'm saying, to life. Yeah, <clears throat> man, definitely, man. And then, like, uh, so shout out to all the young people. But then, you know, you look at some of the people who, like, I think of someone like Omar Epps, right? Mm-hmm. Omar Epps had In Too Deep, The Wood, and The Mod Squad all drop in 1999, right? Mm-hmm. You had uh, Tay Diggs, you know what I'm saying? He was in The Wood, he was in The House on the Hunted Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, you have Kathleen and Jetta Zones, Jetta Zone, Jones, if I can say her last name, <laughs> she was in The Hunting and mm-hmm. the movie that kind of like changed everything. Well, it changed the way I even looked at her Period, but an entrapment. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one scene. <laughs> the one scene. Listen, she was already she was already bad, but when she did yeah, that, but, that laser going through them lasers and that yo, little cat suit. Yo. That being being 14 seeing that, I'm like, mm-hmm. yo. Like, <laughs> yo. Mm-hmm. But I mean, look, shout out to Sean Connery too. Um, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He had a good, you know, he, he had a good thing going in there, but but man, just to think about like a, a a lot of the actors, man, who had like a bunch of movies to come out in the same year, 
that was just uh, some people that I just thought about on top of the head, man. But I mean, look, man, there's so many bangers, man. Like, you know, shit like like Double Jeopardy, yo. Like, did we do Double Jeopardy? I felt like we did Double Jeopardy. I don't think we did. You probably talked about it. I don't think we did Double Jeopardy. Yeah, I might have talked about it, but like, but you know, Double Jeopardy even being what it was and Ashley Judd being what she was at the time. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Oh, I know why I brought up Double Jeopardy. We did uh Morgan Freeman joint, but he was Alex uh Alex Cross. Um oh man, we did that movie. Uh something something cries or um tears or what is that movie called? Oh damn. Yo, we not did so much shit on this podcast, yo. Um, but it was one of the movies where Morgan Freeman played uh played Alex Cross. He played two of them. Mm-hmm. And Ashley Judd was in one of them, and I brought up Double Jeopardy during that. But Double Jeopardy, man, was a great movie. Man, had the guy, the, uh, the legend, Tommy Lee Jones. You know what I'm saying? He was in it, mm-hmm. and um, he was playing a parole officer. Ashley Judd had got out from murdering her husband, but come to find out, the motherfucker ain't dead. You know what I'm saying? Kiss the girl. Kiss the girl. Yeah, 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 that's the one. And like, but Double Jeopardy, man, was dope. I mean, you know another movie that was dope? Fucking Stir of Echoes, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Kevin yeah. Bacon. You know what I'm saying? The whole thing about being hypnotized and shit. And he got hypnotized one time and then he started seeing like he saw basically saw the murder that was uh that was a girl that was buried in his uh that was buried in his uh basement and shit. Mm-hmm. But like just shit like that, like that was that that shit that like fucked with your mind. But yo, we gotta do this real quick though, man. Hold up. What's up? We 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 got we gotta we gotta jump to comedy real quick. Man. We gotta jump to comedy real quick. Okay. Yo, do y'all people realize that American Pie came out in 1999, my guy? Oh man. You yo, you talking about <laughs> <laughs> you talking about a wild ass movie, bro? Nigga, American Pie was sheesh. So like, th- how can I put it? like American Pie was one of them movies that was like, it brought that, it brought like that teen comedy genre to life, because like without American mm-hmm. Pie, you don't get like not another teen movie, you don't get yeah. um, you don't get stuff I don't think like you get the scary movie joints. No, nah, you probably do. No, you probably do. You probably do. But not another team movie is a great, great example. Yeah, but I'm saying like you don't get like the new guy. You don't get um. You don't get movies like uh um oh my goodness um what's the one super bad? You know what I'm saying? Like you don't get none of those movies without American Pie because like that's one of the movies that I mean you don't even get movies like Euro Trip like you don't get none of them, and that's one of those movies that you know what I'm saying like kind of set the tone for like teen comedy, you know what I'm saying? The teen comedy genre. Yeah, man. Another one, but it came out to say, that's another thing. And we just spoke about this uh, when we did Urban Legends. Jawbreaker. Jawbreaker came mm-hmm. out in 99 too, but that that gave you a different spin to the, to the, uh, to the, teen, the teen movies though. But American Pie, man, like there are so many iconic scenes in it that you forget why it's called American Pie. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because my dude got caught you know what I'm saying? Dad, and I popped in on the way you fucking the apple pie in the mm-hmm. fucking kitchen tank. Yo, if you're going to fuck a pie, my guy, an apple pie, why are you going to do that shit on the kitchen table knowing your parents can pop up at any fucking time? No, he like, wasn't on the kitchen table. Remember, he was uh, he was by the, uh, he was at on the counter. Yeah, the ki- yeah the kitchen <laughs> counter. Yeah, like, <laughs> he was on the <laughs> counter. And, it, and, they, and his parents walked in on him, bro. My boy was bare butt cheek smashing the pie for real, for real. Yo, that shit. Is that, wild, hey, but that was a wild scene. That was a that, very wild scene. Man, who you tell it? And then the whole thing of where they what was the oh up. what was old girl? Who was old girl? Um um ah oh, I know it's Elizabeth, Elizabeth Shannon, but what was her name? No, that's what um, I'm talking about. That was the first time we got to see Elizabeth Shannon like show them things. Oh yeah. And it was all right. Highly anticipated. <laughs> yeah, it was all right. <laughs> Can't lie to you. It was all right. <laughs> Yo. Like, that, that, was, still- that was that was that was like remember, I'm eleven. So for me, like that was prime. I was like, all right. But see, 
but this is the thing though. See, this is this is what's so this is so what's go great for me though, because like, and we talked about this, and this is a movie that we have done, mm -hmm. um, like Varsity Blues. So it came out in '99. So mm -hmm. like, watching American Pie and watching Varsity Blues, like I'm looking at, because I'm about to enter high school, so I'm thinking mm -hmm. like, yo, like this is what high school gonna be like. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm watching these movies, and I'm like. Is this what high school is gonna be like? But then, like, it kind of like another thing that American Pie did was like the whole thing of like where psychologically shit start to fuck with you. Because what's another movie that you watch where you could be embarrassed for busting fast? No, that's true. I think this that's is I true. think this is the movie that kind of psychologically fucked everybody up because everybody. But I mean, it was it was it was so it's so relatable to everybody because like that's what you you know what I'm saying like in your teenage years you know what I'm saying you go through that you go through you know what I'm saying your relationship and my, they was in high school so you know what I'm saying like you go through the relationship you go through you know what I'm saying your first experience with you know what I'm saying girls and same thing with girls with dudes and all those kind of things so like they really touched on a lot of different topics in situations from your teenage years. So that it made a lot of sense why, you know what I'm saying? That movie was so impactful. And then like, you know what I'm saying? That's the first time, you know what I'm saying? You in a movie, I think like, as far as joking wise, you know what I'm saying? You seen a dude hit on another dude, you know what I'm saying? Hit on his friend's mom. Like we all got, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to say we all got, but you know what I'm saying? It's people out there with friends where you see their mom, you'd be like, yo, that's your mom, bro. Like, <laughs> like she all right. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know what I mean? We all we all been in those situations. And then the funniest the funniest thing about it all was, you know what I'm saying, my man Stifler, bro. Shout out to Sean William Scott. Like Stifler was the he was the man for a little bit until, you know, he met the nurse. But yeah, you know. Yo, Stifler <laughs> had found himself. Yo, like I yeah. mean <laughs> yo <laughs> Stifler was wild. Stifler was sitting there goddamn Thought that the girl was pouring fucking wine on his head. And mm -hmm. he was getting pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was crazy. Yo, there was so many embarrassing moments in there, man. That shit crazy. But to stay on comedy, man. Yo. Oh, Superstar, man. No. Nah. Superstar, yeah. Superstar was in there. Superstar, bro. Like, Superstar. that was, yeah, that was a, that was a, <laughs> a very different, you know what I'm saying, situation too, because. You know, people don't understand how impactful, you know what I'm saying, SNL, Saturday Night Live for the for the new generation. But they don't understand how impactful that was. Like, they, they know it as, like, a funny, you know what I'm saying, show. But that really launched the careers of a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got guys like Chris Rock, um, who was on SNL. You got guys like, um, you know, Eddie Murphy. You know what I'm saying? Um Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. You know what I'm saying? Um, I bet say Adam Sandler, not Adam Sandler, but um Adam uh Sandberg. Yeah, Andy Sandberg. Andy, um, Andy Sandberg. Andy Sandberg. You got guys like um Ed um Ed Helms. Yep, Ed Helms. Um it's just a Bill Hader, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a bunch of people that came from that show that in go you know went on to make movies you know what i mean like dan Aykroyd, um you know what I'm saying like a bunch of people but in this specific time uh chris katan was another one too but like in this specific time you got all of these guys who were doing snl in the 90s and then like next thing you know their characters ended up becoming movies like you know what i'm saying the ladies man you know what i'm saying with um i forgot what his name is uh, but his character was Leon Phelps. People don't even, you know, so like people nowadays, if they see the ladies, man, they wouldn't even know that Leon Phelps was a skit that was done or the ladies, man, with Leon Phelps was a skit that was done on SNL because he used to have like a call in talk show where he was talking like super wild. You know what I'm saying? Chris Katan and um, Will Ferrell, they used to do uh, the little the brothers that used to be at the club, you know, what I'm saying harassing women. You know, what I'm saying? trying to mack up on women, and that end up being Night at the Roxbury. You know, what I'm saying Molly Shannon used to be a cheerleader, or used to want to be a cheerleader, but she was like a real, you know, what I'm saying shy nerd in school, and that ended up becoming superstar. You know, what I'm saying so, like all of these different characters that they was playing in these, you know, it's like in these movies. I mean, in this, in this show, ended up really like 
being used to be, uh, make movies. And Superstar was one of those ones that, you know what I'm saying, was it wasn't like super, super like popular, but because of, you know what I'm saying, the popularity of SNL, like it did fairly well. True. <clears throat> Definitely, man. And like another movie, man, very, very, very underrated, man. I think mm-hmm. this is a movie that a lot of people seem to sleep on um, when they think of Martin. That's another one. Martin came out with life, but the movie mm-hmm. that I'm also talking about is Blue Street, man. Yeah. Like people forget Great movie. how hilarious Blue Street was, yo. Like and then Dave Chappelle being in there. Yep. And like, and this is before Dave Chappelle was like really Dave Chappelle. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was just like, hey, but it was like what was so funny. And I don't know why this one scene sticks with me. And um and that when he was uh after he was sitting there, uh <laughs> it was so funny. He was sitting there holding his mouth. He said, yo, y'all might as well forget it. He ain't talking. He was like, mm-hmm. yeah, because you got your hand over his mouth. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he was like, he took his hand off his mouth. He said, they smell it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nah, that's one of the funny ones too. But the best, to me, the best scene in that movie, bro, is when he was trying to figure out how to get into the police station. And that nigga dressed up as the pizza man, and he was talking to oh, dude yeah. at the uh, at the at the counter in the front. And he was like, "You can just leave this with me." He said, "No, nah, I can't leave this with you." The last time I left it with you, he got a call talking about the pizza disappeared. Do you know where the pizza went? <laughs> Do you got any idea? And the whole time he got the teeth in his mouth, bro. That hey, that was hilarious. Then he left out and did the dance, bro. I was like, man. No, yeah. that movie was great, bro. Like that, that movie, movie was hilarious. Yeah, that movie was great, bro. Like Martin did a great job in that movie, man. Hey, um, they said, they said, they said, he said, he said, uh, he has, a, uh, he said, all I can tell you about that Miles, whatever guy, is mm-hmm. that he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that's uh, hey, that movie was crazy, but yeah, that movie man. Was um, hilarious. But this was a great, this was a great, you know what I'm saying, year for black movies too. You know what I'm saying? We got movies like The Best Man that came out. You know what I'm saying? You said like The Wood. Um, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of movies, uh, Blue Streak, of course. It was a lot of movies that came out like that, you know what I'm saying, that we got to see. So this was a great year for um, black film. Um, and it was it was a couple movies out there too, man, that was uh, kind of trash. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it was it was definitely some trash movies out there. Um, let me see. I mean, as far as like trash movie that that I can remember watching. Mm-hmm. Let me see. What did I watch? That oh, I can trash? name one off the top of my head. What you go ahead, go ahead. Ghost Dog. The fuck is that? Ghost Dog is it got uh <laughs> what's that nigga name man with the messed up eye uh Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> this nigga is a this nigga is a detective, but he trains in the way of the samurai, and he like a hood detective. It was so it's the the concept of the movie is trash. Like Forrest Whitaker make it good because he can act, but like the concept of the movie is trash. His braids was trash in the movie because he had braids, and it was like a horrible braid wig that was trash. Like everything about this movie was wild. Like it's this one scene where like he doing a, a voiceover. And like mm-hmm. as he's doing a voiceover talking about was you know what I'm saying whatever he's talking about like he's on the roof in New York like doing moves with a sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay okay I got you one yeah yo do you remember White Boys? Yep. Trash. Yo that movie was trash. But now it was one of those trash movies where it was like like some of the shit was so stupid that you had to laugh. But mm-hmm. what was so wild was even Snoop had a song for that shit. Snoop said, white boys, white boys, boys. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? I was like, how did Snoop agree to do this shit? But yeah. like that was that him. was a movie. That was a movie that was trash. Oh man, do we gotta do this to him, man? Who? Let's say this and then we're gonna brush over it, man. We, we gotta keep it pushing, man. Wild Wild West, man. Oh yeah, never mind. We ain't gonna talk about that. Horrible movie. Yeah. Um yeah. You know what I'm saying? Another good oh. movie. Oh, hold on. We still on trash. Hold on. Let's stay on trash yeah. right quick. I hate I know. This, we, we still on trash, but go ahead. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Candyman 3. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. C- come on, man. We ain't, you ain't got to mention that. Candyman trash. Candyman 3 was so trash. That. You don't got to mention that, bro. 
Um, another good movie that was a trash movie was um, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my guy Jamie Foxx, you know what I'm saying? As funny as he is. Shout out to Gary Owen too, because he was in his too. Held up. Oh, held up did come out 99, didn't yeah. it? <laughs> now it's a trash movie, don't get me wrong. But it's still, you know what I'm saying, it's still funny. It's, it's a good trash movie, you know what I'm saying? But it, it, it's it's definitely still funny. The funny part is the whole time they thought this nigga was Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I forgot because they he, thought he was Mike Tyson. He was in he was in like this rural ass town, like full of white people, bro. And like the that shit was so funny. These niggas was in the he they it was a hold up in the uh at the gas station. At the gas station, yeah. Yeah, and then this nigga they was calling this nigga Mike Tyson the whole time. So the so everybody that's outside of the, the gas station thinking that Mike Tyson is really in the uh <laughs> they thought he was really in there <laughs> being held up. And during the armed robbery. So, you know what I'm saying? And it was like a whole hostage situation. He was trying to get to the plane to get his girl. Like, so that was um that was a good move, a good trash movie. Another trash movie was um Dudley Do Right. Shout out to um Sarah Jessica Parker and uh Brendan Fraser. They they brought to life a classic um cartoon that people grew up with. Um, but it was it was so horrible. Like Brendan Fraser, bro, like it ain't too many movies that he in. Like and he did a lit. He did like a, Dude, a he did long the mummy that year. I know, but he also did George of the Jungle. Like he was yeah. he, for some odd reason they kept picking him to bring like these old cartoons to life, and they was just like super trash movies. But yeah, he he did great with the mummy though. Yeah, yeah, I fought with the mummy. Um, let me see what else do we got. Man, I bet you you liked it though. Austin Power joints, man. One of them came out that year as well. The first one, The Spy Who Shagged Me. <laughs> Austin Powers was a, it is a horrible movie, but it's it's too funny not to you know what I'm saying it's too funny to oh oh the Mod Squad shout out to Omar Epps, the Mod, man. yeah that was horrible it was you want to know something else that was horrible but it was funny what's that Idle Hand man ah oh, man that was Idle Hand garbage, came out ninety nine <laughs> that was so garbage bro yo he had cut do head off and then he's all eating the burrito. And the burrito start coming out the duct tank. They put the <laughs> man. That shit was stupid, bro. I remember the trailer for that movie though. Like the trailer made it seem like one of them movies where you'll be like, "Oh man, that's that look fun." No, nah, man, that shit was dumb, bro. This nigga was getting attacked by his own hand. <laughs> that he cut off. <laughs> yeah, bro. That shit was stupid. Oh um, man. I'm trying to see what else we got here, man. Yo, it was it was a lot of movies, bro, that really came out during this time. Um, it was, but but yo, it it won it won though, man, because it's a lot of shit. Like we talking about trash shit right now. Yeah, <clears throat> but it's a lot, dude. I forgot the first uh South Park movie came out in '99. Yeah, for sure. And at that time, it was like a super super big thing. Yeah, because that's when they Super started taking deal. shows. Because you know they did. I can't remember what year it was, but you know Beavis and Butthead had got a movie around this time. You know, yep. so you're thinking about a movie that was a TV show on MTV, and then mm-hmm. they just make a movie out of that shit. Then they then end up doing it with South Park as well. Yo, the I don't Beavis know who did Butthead it first. Though. Movie was was so good, bro. Like people forget that that's where Hank Hill came from. The, Damn. the dude that does the voice of I mean the dude that does the voice and started um and started uh King of the Hill, that's um that's the dude that you know what I'm saying did the voices and stuff for um uh Beavis and Butthead too. Beavis and Butthead, yeah. Um okay, since we did trash, let's do underrated movies, man. Um a movie to me that was a really, really great movie and very, very underrated was. Uh, did you ever get to see The Corrupter? No. Mark Wahlberg and um, oh, what's that Chinese dude name? Um, Chow um uh, Chow Young Fat. Yo, yeah. that dude. <clears throat> he had a few movies, man. That Chinese guy. He had a few movies. Um, mm-hmm. that was uh, cause he did that one movie with uh Bridget Fonda. Yeah, but uh, he he had a little time, man, and the corrupted man. It ended up being a good movie where they they were partners, mm-hmm. and 
if I'm not mistaken, Mark Wahlberg was he Ricky Ricky Cop. They ended up teaming him up with the other guy, he the Chinese guy, and he ended up being dirty. But yeah. um it turned out to be a really, really good movie, man. The underrated movie that came out that I feel like didn't get it like a lot of shine, but it was a really, really good movie, man. It snuck up on people, I feel like. Yeah, for sure. Um another underrated movie, man, was uh black and white. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if you've Definitely. seen that one. But, yeah, uh, I seen Black and White. Yeah, Black and White was that joint. It had Ben Stiller in it. Um, it had a, a lot of the members of Wu Tang in it. But it was basically uh, about you know what I'm saying this dude who was trying to get these um, this rap you know what I'm saying these rappers signed to a label, but he basically got a chance to get immersed into the culture. Uh, into hip hop culture, and it kind of showed you the differences of, um, you know, what I'm saying the cultures, you know, what I'm saying where he, you know, the suburban culture, urban culture thing, and it was a great, you know, what I'm saying reflection of, you know, what I'm saying those um, vast differences at the time, and I thought that was a great, great movie. Um, another one that a lot of people, you know, what I'm saying probably it's to me it's a hood classic, but it was super funny. But the breaks. If anybody ever seen that, that was actually a pretty good movie. It was about uh, a white kid who grew up in an all black family. And, you know, what I'm saying he was basically one of them, but he was going around like <laughs> he got end up getting lost or something like that. And then he ended up with this. No, he was with this little boy who ended up getting lost. And like all of this stuff was happening to him, but he didn't know the little boy was lost. And then, like, at toward the end of the movie, you know what I'm saying? Like, they found a little boy. He got a reward. And then he was doing something for his mom. But every time he was doing something and he had talked to somebody, he'd be like, yeah, so something about my mama. And they'd be like, yo, mama. And then he'd show him the picture of his mom. And it's an old black lady. They'd be like, man, that ain't your mama. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, Bowfinger, too, man. Bowfinger was a good one. Yep. It was. It was. Um, I think – so I got two that I feel that were kind of – <clears throat> kind of looked over where I, I I don't know maybe it was just my personal taste but I felt like to me honestly I thought Deep Blue Sea was a great movie. Um, yeah, it, it was, was a movie that was kind of slept on. LL Cool J made history of being yeah, you know what I'm saying the black dude movie. who survived the whole movie. Um, he he was not the first though. We got to nah he wasn't that. but like that's Shout the movie the that everybody Cube. seemed to yeah yeah um, with Shout Anaconda yep and uh yeah because I thought Anaconda came out ninety eight. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's one movie, man. I, I, I really fucked with Deep Blue Sea. Um, and then my one dude, Thomas Kane, ended up becoming uh, The Punisher and all that type of shit. But yep. another movie, man, that I felt that was overrated, it's a remake, but I thought it was good, man. Kind of cheesy, but I felt it was good, was House mm -hmm. on the Hunted Hill, man. I fucked with House on the Hunted Hill. I thought they I did a really I, good yeah, job I with it. I couldn't get into that one. See, I, I liked it, man. I thought it, I thought it was good. Um, and what was so crazy, I used to always get, I don't know why, I used to get the hunt, House on the Hunted Hill and The Haunting, like kind of mixed up when they're not even remotely the same two movies. Which one had I, uh, Tay Diggs in it? Tay Diggs was in House on the Hunted Hill. Okay. Uh, the Haunting had um, That's the one Kat, I watched, yeah. Kathleen uh, Jetta Jones and Liam Neeson. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't watch The Hunting. I, I watched The House on the Hunted Hill. That's the one I ain't like. <clears throat> Yeah, man, but man, it's so much shit, man. Oh my god, man. Fucking oh, fight club. Yeah, fight club for sure. Fight club for sure. Um, but don't forget, man, like we missing out on a, a huge, huge part. Um, this was the year that uh you know since some major blockbuster movies came out, but people also forget that this was um the year of you know what I'm saying Pokemon too. You know what I mean? People forget how big Pokemon was around this time. You know what I'm saying? The first Pokemon movie had dropped. You know what I'm saying? It did, of course, amazingly well. But then the second movie dropped, Pokemon 2000. That joint dropped. And that was the, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was one of the big movies, especially if you was younger. Like, if you was around my age, that was one of the big movies. Because this is around the time that Pokemon cards was, you know what I'm saying, doing their thing. Pokemon was one of the biggest crazes at the time. You know, um, but this was about the three legendary Pokemon. It was Articuno, Zapdos, and um, oh, what was the other one? It's Articuno, Zapdos, and um, 
I forgot what the fire one was. But basically, you know what I'm saying? The the main character of, the, of Pokemon, Ash Ketchum, he had to get help get the stones or whatever to bring balance back, you know what I'm saying, to the islands for the um legendary bird Pokemon. I forgot what that what that third one was, but I know the uh the electric one was Zapdos, the ice one was Articuno, and then uh, the I forgot what the fire one was, but you know what I'm saying? Them three cards became like super, super hot at the time. Once the movie came out, everybody was trying to get them legendary cards. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, with, you know what I'm saying? Everybody remembering the the phenomenon of Pokemon Go, it was nowhere near as big as when the Pokemon cards came out, when everybody was playing Pokemon on the Game Boy, you know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. So when this movie dropped, it did amazing. <clears throat> that that it did. I didn't. I wasn't really like into it like that. So I yeah, was you was you was in yeah, you was older older at that time. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I I had missed that man. I had missed that. I was more into, and this is a movie that I, I feel like because it's another one of those movies where it's kind of kind of mid. I mean, they was kind of not mid teens, but like late teens. Like no, no, this was a high school movie. That's right, because they were seniors in high school. Mm-hmm. Cruel Intentions, man. I fuck with Cruel Intentions. Um, that okay. was something that that I was I was really into, man. But like I say, man, that was so much shit to come out that year. Man, Girl Interrupted came out. Oh that man, year, no, man. listen, you talking about you talking about a great comedy movie, bro? Mystery Men. Mystery Men. You ain't never seen Mystery Men with Ben Stiller and um, Pee Wee Herman and uh, who else was in that? Oh damn movie? hell no. Nah. Nah, I man, didn't see that. Listen, bro, you talking about funny, bro. This so Mystery Man is a movie about these people that want to be superheroes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's it's one dude in the movie, he's an actual superhero. So he he's fighting, um, he's fighting this like this villain that end up getting out of breaking out of you know saying prison or whatever. So um you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? They trying to, they actually out there fighting crime and doing everything else. You know what I'm saying? Like they really trying to be superheroes. Well, <laughs> this nigga end up getting caught by the dude and the dude kill him with this, like this, this ray that he create. So he, he actually killed this nigga. So now it's left up to them to be the real superheroes, but they so unorganized and goofy. Like the one, the one chick, I forgot what, uh, I forgot what her name is. Um, is uh something Ger- Geraldi or oh, I forgot what her name is, but um, but basically her power is her dad died, so she got his skull in the bowling ball, and she can literally control the bowling ball like the her dad's spirit controls the bowling ball, and she throws the bowling ball at people and shit, and it comes back into it comes back to her. Um, Pee Wee Herman's superpower was like his farts. <laughs> ben still. <laughs> Uh oh, Kel Mitchell was in it. Kel Mitchell was in it. He was um he threw like forks and shit. No, he he was uh the invisible boy. He was the invisible boy. And then Ben Stiller, he was um he was the uh the rage or the, the something where he get angry, he get real, real angry and shit. He go into a rage and beat people up. But he wasn't that like when he anytime he was going into the raid, he was always getting his ass whooped. And then like it was a dude on there who was throwing like the knives and forks and shit. And then this yeah. the the other dude, he was like the shoveler or something like that. But he basically wore a hard hat and suspenders and fought people with a shovel. So it was just like a band of misfits who just end up becoming. It was like the comedy version of Kick Ass. Oh shit. Bro, but it's it's hilarious though. Like the the concept that they come up with for superheroes, bro, was so stupid. Like the stuff you would think, like, bro, nobody will believe you're a superhero wearing that shit. But it was a good, it was a pretty good movie. It was super funny, man. That's funny, man. So look a little break from that, man. Like just for so people to understand, like what really happened in year. And we talked about this because we did this movie. Like the movie that ended up winning, like best picture. Like I'm just mentioning, like the nominees and what won like kind of like the most rewards in 1999 Mm -hmm. from um, the bullshit Oscars. But we mentioned this before American beauty, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Big year. Um, They won five nominated eight times. Yo movie. Surprise. We ain't brought it up yet. The matrix matrix came out in 99. You know what I'm saying? They were four for four side of house rules. You know what I'm saying? They were two for seven. Mm -hmm. Um, Tipsy turvy. I never heard of this. Uh, They were two for four sleepy hollow. It was one for three. Mm-hmm. This is another movie. A fucking really, really good movie, man. I should have put this in my slept on uh, category. 
Boys Don't Cry. Boys That's Don't Cry with really... Johnny Depp. No, no, no. Boys Don't Cry is um, uh, what's my girl name? Um, are you kidding me? She was in um Million Dollar Baby. She was the uh Hillary Swank. Hillary Swank. Hil- okay. Hillary Swain played um she played uh Tina Brandon. Uh, true story, this girl who pretended to be a boy. She was like one of like the first like transgender type joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. She, was, she was taping down her chest and all that. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. yeah, they ended up raping her and yeah. killing her. Um, uh, well, the real person. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Tarzan was one for one. Um, one night in September was one for one. Red by the talented Mr. Like, Ripley, um, man. Don't forget about that one. Uh, I don't know if it got nominated, but that I don't see movie. it anywhere. Yeah. That was definitely um, a big movie. But Girl Interrupted was though. Girl yeah, Interrupted. Girl I was just yep. mentioned that. But um, but just just some movies that ended up winning, man. Look, man, we could we can go all fucking yeah. day, man. And, and we still leaving like a lot of shit out, man. Hell like eight shit. mil eight millimeter was great. That to mm-hmm. me, that was Nicolas Cage best movie in my eyes. Um nah, you know, man, as far you're crazy. As, National Treasure. <clears throat> now, I like National Treasure. That's in my top three. Yeah, National Cage. Treasure is Nicolas Cage's best movie ever. I, I don't. You can put it up with anything you want to. That's the that's the only movie to me where he's not Nicolas Cage. I feel you because even the eight millimeter, he was kind of odd. Nicolas Cage. Um, <laughs> he was... Yeah. Um. Surprise! You ain't mentioned this man. A comedy joint, Big Daddy. Big Daddy came out. Adam yeah, Sandler. that was a, that was definitely <clears throat> a, a classic, man. Um, um. That's that's another one of the ones that showed you. You know, what I'm saying how. Uh, powerful Adam Sandler was because you know what I'm saying he was bringing a lot of people in there like he he was putting Rob Snyder on um, the dudes that was in um, the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody you know what I'm saying they played the little boy in that movie um, it was a bunch of people in there who because of Adam Sandler you know what I'm saying had a, a nice career um, but before we before we you know what I'm saying finish this up and get into our top joints. What was your life like in 1999? Oh, <clears throat> 1999, man. So I was I was in the eighth grade. Um, my life was it was full of sports, man. Um, I was on eighth grade. I was on jet. I was on the. So if we're starting like the school, well, cause see that's the back end. So even at the end of my seventh grade year, man, like, so it's kind of like if you start beginning of the year, which is in January, so I'm playing basketball up until up until the summer. Um, then I go into track, and then I was running AAU track. As a matter of fact, I think that is the year, if I'm not mistaken. I think 1999 was the first year I really left the state of South Carolina. That's a great question because I think that's the first year I left the state. Um, we made it to nationals in mm-hmm. track in AAU track. Um, mm-hmm. We did the uh, we did the four by one. Uh, so we had to travel to Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland. And if we would have won there, we would have made it to the nationals. We would have went to uh, Omaha, Nebraska, and we lost by four tenth of a second mm. of qualifying for the nationals. Man, it was me. It was me, Carlos, which is hustle boy. Yeah, I did an interview with uh Sinclair and um who was the other leg? Uh shit, I forgot who the other leg was. I was the third leg. Um, but yeah, um, so then going into August, football season. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, I was on the JV squad uh, mm-hmm. as an eighth grader. Mm-hmm. And um, so really, man, like I say, 1999 for me, man, it was it was it was full of sports, man. It was you know, new things happened in my life. Like I said, it was the first time I can really remember it, leaving the state of South Carolina and then going to uh, Baltimore on uh, running track. So that was fun, man, to take a road trip and all that type of shit. I mean, we really was going all over the place, man. We was going to, um, like, well, that wasn't the first time because, because so I'm not mistaken, because we had to run, like, we had to run a meet in, like, uh, Charleston. <laughs> not Charleston. Um, 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 Clump. Damn. I'm gone. My seeds is coming in sep- damn Charlotte. <laughs> mm-hmm. So like, like no, like that, man. Like that, it was just all I really was doing at the time, man, was, was sports and watching TV, man. Nice. To be honest with you, 
Um, and then you also got to consider something else that happened in 99 was, you know what I'm saying, you can't forget the music, man. The first rapper to have two platinum albums in one year. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? It's dark and hell is hot, flesh in my flesh, blood in yeah. my blood. But I had both albums. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, that was really what it was, man. It was sports. It was sports, music, and TV, man. That That's what 1999 was for me. How about that's yourself? Dope. Man, for me, um, 1999 was a wild year because this was my uh, second year in the sixth grade, right? So, I got expelled from, uh, what was it, Broadmoor Academy in the sixth grade. And it was a it up here it's called Trotwood. It's like a suburb every day. But it was a Trotwood public school. I ended up getting expelled from there over some stupid shit. Then I had to do sixth grade all over again because I was gonna miss too much of the year. So did that. Um and I went to uh I went to a um a charter school called Dayton Urban Academy. And that's when like my world opened up going to that school. So that was my first time having a Spanish class. That was my first time meeting. Um, I think he was Israeli. No, he wasn't Israeli. He was um, 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 Afghani. That was my first time meeting somebody from Afghanistan. That was my first time meeting somebody that was Indian. Like it was a whole bunch of stuff. That's my first time learning about Islam. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, That's when I first had braids. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that was a, that was a lot of first for me. You know what I'm saying? So doing that, I was playing for, I think I was playing for the Dayton Flames around that time. Cause we didn't have like elementary school teams. We had like, you know what I'm saying? Like just little league teams. So um, yeah, that was my first time. I mean, well, it wasn't my first time. That was my last time playing with the Dayton Flames uh that's the year we didn't win a championship 97 my first time playing we won the, we won the championship 98 we came in second place and then the year after that we didn't play no more that was my first time getting injured too i had uh hyper extended my knee so i couldn't play for the uh first half of the season and then uh I'm trying to think what else man um oh um for me, you know what I'm saying, DMX, of course, Jay-Z was still popping. Um, that's when I had started really listening to, like, Wu-Tang, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, that's when I really started getting into, like, East Coast rap and shit like that. I was listening to Outkast, of course. Um, and then, for me, all my movies was comedies, because, you know what I'm saying, I was a goofball as a kid, so all my movies was comedies. And that was the first time I ever did my Bill Cosby impression. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I used to do Bill Cosby as a kid. That's when I used to watch all kind of stand-ups. Like, I used to watch Red Fox, Bill Cosby, Richard Pryor, you know what I'm saying? Like, all the, you know what I'm saying, all the greats. Um, and then, um, trying to think. Yeah, we, um, we, that's the, so that year was the last year that we would ever live in apartments, too. So we moved into uh, the house that we in now. We moved into the house in 2000, the year 2000. Um, but we was moving, you know, so like all December long or whatever. But after that, you know, saying like they, the end of that year, everybody was worried about Y2K or whatever. But of course, we figured out it wasn't nothing. But then like the next day, nigga, we was in the house. So, yeah, it was a it was a, a very, uh, a very growing year for me. That's what's up, man. Yeah, man. That's the, yeah, man. It's uh. Yeah, for some of our listeners, they're gonna be like, "Damn, y'all old." Some of them gonna be like, "Oh yeah, I can remember." <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, if you old enough to remember Y two K, bro, like everything else should shouldn't scare you at all. That shit was. They really had us believing like shit was gonna be fucking the Walking Dead in this motherfucker. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> the Walking hey, Dead bro. before the Walking Dead. Hey, yeah, man, Y two K was such bullshit, bro. Like. The okay, so for people who don't know what Y two K is, Y two K was basically the the people of America was believing that when nineteen ninety nine went to two thousand on uh, the computers and everything else that kind of ran like the banks and you know what I'm saying and all the infrastructures and everything like that, they thought that it was just going to reset to nineteen hundred. 
So they thought everything was gonna be fucked up. They thought <laughs> they thought all this shit was gonna, you know what I'm saying, shut down. They thought the power grid was gonna go out. Like it was crazy, it was pandemonium, bro. Like when it, it you know what I'm saying? Like I said, if you thought that when people was buying paper towels and toilet paper and hand sanitizer during COVID, like it was worse than that. People was buying like bottled water. You couldn't buy bottled water nowhere, you couldn't find no canned goods nowhere, you couldn't find shit. Like you had to like people was building um People was building shelters. Bunkers and shit. Yeah, bunkers. Like it was wild, bro. Like, and then like it was just one of them things that were like every day on the news. That's all they was talking about. Like that was the that was for like at least seven, eight months out of the year. Like that was the the news story, like the major news story. So you know what I'm saying? Everybody was worried about that. It was a fun year though. Don't get me wrong, because you know what I'm saying. Like for for me at least. I was younger. I was like, like I said, I was 11. So that was me coming into my teenage years. And you know what I'm saying? I, I, at that time, that's when everybody used to be outside doing stuff. And then I was moving into a new neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Eventually and meeting new friends and stuff. So for me, that was, a, it was a, a super fun year, man. But um, bro, let's get into this top five, man. You ready for this? Ah, oh, man. I ain't got no choice but to be, man. <laughs> All right, man. So, um, do you got any honorable mentions? Um, yeah. Um, first one I want to mention, I, I swept over it. I said it really quick, mm-hmm. but um, it was a very impactful movie, man. It was one of those movies. I think this was like the first movie where I really started like really paying attention to where like, oh shit, I missed, I missed the whole, like the first like two times that I seen it. I mi- I completely missed it, and then it, mm-hmm. I think that this was the movie that kind of trained me to pay attention to the signs because there's a deep a deeper message within the movie, and that's the sixth sense. Okay, and this was a movie that put M Night Shyamalan on the fucking yeah. map. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And yeah. so like this was like that first movie, man, that that really did it, man. So I would have to put I would have to put that in my honorable mention, man. Another movie that I would have to put in there. Um, simply because of the impact. Um, mm-hmm. one of your favorite movies, The Matrix, man. Um, yeah. Just the the way that the Matrix. I mean, like, dude, it's a meme to this day. Red pill, blue pill. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. it it can it completely changed a lot of the way how cinema was. Another movie, man. Um, even though the fir- the first one was way more impactful, mm-hmm. but. Um, the second one came out this in '99. Um, the Ring Two, man. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, the, yeah. Yeah, the first one was wasn't way as good more as the first one. Yeah, when when is good? As yeah, the first it wasn't. One. It wasn't as good. I, I think that was just my way of like mention, yeah. mentioning the Ring. Um, but I just felt that <clears throat> that year, um, for it coming out that year, I just think that mm-hmm. that was just one of those movies that kind of kind of did it. But um, we kind of mentioned it a little bit. The Mummy, I I yep. look, I fuck with the Mummy movies, man. I really, I really did. Um, but I'm, I'm just, I'm rambling now, man, because it, it's just so much <laughs> shit that I, that I missed. Yeah, yeah it's man, late, it's, it's man. so, it's so many good movies to come out that year, man. But uh, what you got? Is some, of, some of your honorable mentions, man. Um, so mine was uh Lake Placid. You know what I'm saying? That was uh, oh, I uh, love that movie. Yeah, that was that was my joint, man. Shout out to Betty White. Um. But that was my joint. Uh, any given Sunday for sure. Any given Sunday for sure. Um, the Boondock Saints. You know what I'm saying? Um, that was a that was one of the movies that I ended up getting into and was like, oh shit. And um, believe it or not, man, Dogma. Dogma yeah, dog- was a yeah. Dogma was a wild, wild movie. Um, it was. But you know what I'm saying? It it brought a. And once again, like I said, this was me being introduced to a lot of different things. So, you know what I'm saying? Being introduced to Islam and being introduced to um, Judaism and all this other stuff around this time. I, I learned about Buddhism and stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? Learning learning about that, you know what I'm saying, at 11 can be, you know, kind of rough. But a movie like Dogma kind of, you know what I'm saying, added some stuff in there, too. And so they had a comedic take on it, but I love that movie. But yeah, that's that, those are excuse me, some of my um honorable mentions for sure. Sure, man. And 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 I know I'm cheating. I'm sorry, y'all. But I gotta mention it, man. The mm-hmm. astronaut's wife 
And Usher Raymond's first movie, man, with the, with the with the beautiful um, Vanessa Williams, man, light it up, man, light it up is is a, is a very underrated movie that came out that year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, since you threw, oh, man. I'm gonna throw one more out there too. But you already said it, Austin Powers for sure. Uh, my my mom bought me that shit on VHS. <laughs> 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 Yo, bro. Let me tell you something, bro. <laughs> Yo, bro. Austin Powers, the spot who shagged me, is so fucking hilarious, man. Like, just that that shit was that shit was funny, bro. Like, I didn't I didn't get a chance to see the first one, but that's the first one I had ever seen at the time. So I went back and seen the first one. But just Mike Myers is so fucking goofy, man. And then when they was doing the um, is that a Johnson? No, that's a. And then you know what I'm saying the. With the rocket, they was doing the joke at the end with the rocket. It was shaped like a, a, a male genitalia. That shit was hilarious. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, number five, man, what you got? Oh, man. So, I did this on purpose, people. Um, but this is a movie that is my number one guilty pleasure. Um, it's one of those movies, I, I can't tell you why. I like it as much as I do, mm-hmm. but anytime that it's anytime that it's on, I always watch it. Um, rest in peace to Heath Ledger. Shout out to Julia Styles. Ten things I hate about you, man. I don't know why, man. I don't know bro, why. My cousin, my cousin, fucking loved that movie, bro. I didn't get it, but she loved that movie, bro. Yo, I don't know what it is, man. Every time it's on. I got to watch it, man. It's one of my guilty pleasure movies, man. That that um, one scene where he be singing? I hate that fucking scene. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I hate that movie, bro. Yo, just the idea <laughs> of somebody like, yo, I want to take this girl to the prom, so I'm oh going to pay God. you to take this girl out because <laughs> her dad won't let her date with yeah. her other sister date. It's like, Weird, it is bro. mad crazy, but at the same time, yo, Yo, listen. When they when she asked with uh when old girl asked her dad mm-hmm. about going out, my man said, my man said, uh, oh, how did he put it? He said he was like he was like oh he was like oh I'm hip. He was like um oh my god. He said he said you can't get jiggy with him no matter how dope his ride is. Like that shit had me fucking dying, but. But, like, it's just one of those movies, man. Like, it's cheesy. It's corny. Like, it's also, like, another one of those movies where it's kind of like, you know, getting a glimpse into high school because I wasn't in high school yet. Not not, not knowing exactly what high school is going to bring to me. And I think that's one of those things where it's just kind of like your hormones are going crazy. And, like, for me... I was on the uh, C team basketball and football team my seventh grade year. So I was going to the high school. So I was getting little glimpses, and I had older cousins who was in high school. So it was kind of like not knowing what to expect and watching movies like that and seeing how certain girls were and dudes were and all that type of shit like that. So I think that this movie, like, just something as crazy as a girl flashing a teacher to get a dude out of the tension. Like, like what kind of crazy shit is that? Like, who, <laughs> like who does that? Flashes the detention teacher to get a student, the sneaker student, out of fucking detention. Like, like it just got some wild shit in it, man. And yeah. Like, hey, yo, that was and don't and don't forget, bro. Like, this was a wild time in movies too, bro. Because like, this is when like that weird relationship with like teenagers and adults was like cool in film. Yeah. Cause dude, she flashed her teacher and nothing happened. That's what I'm saying. Like it was just a weird, <laughs> weird, it was a weird, weird thing, bro. Yeah, man. So that's my number five, man. All right, man. So for me, man, number five is, um, shout out to Tom Cruise, man. Eyes wide shut. You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah, you that's mentioned one that of them. On Vanilla Sky. Yeah. That's one of them movies that, you know, um, I've been I've been super super into like conspiracy theories for a long time. Like I used to argue with people in school about whether they landed on the moon or not. Um, so 
you know what I'm saying? Like, this is one of those things where, like, you know what I'm saying? Before we really heard about the Illuminati and all that kind of stuff, like, before it became a real big thing to talk about, like, this was one of those things that was, like, bringing, you know what I'm saying, like, those secret societies and all that kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying, into the into people's, you know what I'm saying, brains or whatever, you know what I'm saying, basically showing them up close and personal, like, some of this stuff could be true, you know what I'm saying, like, these are the kind of things they might do and stuff like that. So like it was a it was a real good look into um that type of world and I thought that was a very interesting movie, you know what I'm saying, to see. And yes, I was eleven watching Eyes Wide Shut. So I don't want to hear nobody like, man, you were watching you know I was. Y'all yeah, I know y'all wouldn't believe I was watching a lot of this stuff, but I grew up I grew up with older cousins, so trust me, I seen a lot of different stuff, bro. Nah, I feel you, I feel you, man. Number four for me, man, is comedic gold um it was one of those times where you seen two legends together you had a whole bunch of cameos in there i mean actually there was a whole bunch of legends in it man but two dudes ray and claude you know what i'm saying got caught down south you know what i'm saying caught down south and got charged for murder and when you think about it as funny (laughs) as it is you almost forget that these dudes spend the rest of the well, pretty much their whole life in jail for a crime they did not commit. Um, that's the one sad part about it. But life, man. Um, yeah, well, I mean, Martin they got Martin, out. They got out toward the end and got man, the chance to on, watch it. They was man. fucking ninety-eight <laughs> years old, man. Um, but uh, Martin <laughs> Lawrence, man, Eddie Murphy, Bernie Mac, Guy Tory. I mean, oh, the list goes cast. on and on and on and on and on. Man. Gold I can't mouth. name everybody. Yeah, man. You gonna eat your cornbread? You know like, what? come on, man. People forget. He's... People forget that Gold Mouth was the dude singing in Gangsters Paradise. Damn, that's wild. Yeah. So yeah, I, I know a lot of y'all probably like, what the fuck is Gangsters Paradise? Gangsters Paradise was Coolio's. Was Coolio's hit. biggest hit ever. And, and that, it was you also about crossover. Yeah, it was also the theme song for um, Dangerous Minds. Dangerous Minds, starring Michelle Pfeiffer. That was sure. the white. That was the white woman version of Lean on Me. Yep. Yeah, she was the white woman version. Well, yeah, she was the white woman version of Joe Clark. That she was. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the older people. I was. That. I was gonna say. I was, but it's a basketball movie, and she was a coach. But I was gonna say, uh, Sunset Park. Kind of, but... yeah, kind of. Um, so for me, number four, man, uh, shout out to Johnny Depp, bro. Um, it's Sleepy Hollow. You know what I'm saying? Sleepy Hollow was my joint, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? I read the book about the headless horseman, of course. You know, so I used to read a lot, so that was one of the books that I read. So when they brought it to life, and you know, they um, they kind of, you know put that on film i thought it was super super dope um it was johnny depp it was um christina ritchie um I'm trying to think who else was in this movie bro it was a couple of people in this movie but it was just dope to see you know what i'm saying it was him working with tim burton again <clears throat> excuse me um you know what i'm saying another classic that was just one of the joints where it was just a it was a good movie you know what i'm saying it was great special effects and all that and just all around, like that was one of the best Johnny Depp performances for me. I ain't mad at it, man. I seen I seen Sleepy Hollow, man. That was a pretty good one. Um, for me, man, cracking the top three. <sighs> this is another one of those movies, man, where the dudes they're in middle school, then they go to high school, and like I said, man, I'm getting ready to enter high school, so it's kind of like. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, well, my brain is starting to develop a little bit more, but this was one of the all-time movies, period. Um, the Wood, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Tay Diz, Omar Epps, Richard T. Jones. Yeah, like, The Wood, man, uh, Sanaya Lathan. Like, mm-hmm. it, it was just so many people in it, man. Stacy, You know what I'm saying? We can't forget <laughs> about Stacy. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows Stacy. Everybody knows Stacey. Uh, shout out to DeAndre Barnes, man. Yeah. But the wood, man. The wood was so. The wood was so great, man. Yeah, um, good coming it, to age story. Yeah, it it definitely was, man. It definitely was, man. So, man, that I I can go on and on and on, man, about the wood, but I'm, yeah. I'm gonna leave it there, man. The wood was is one of my favorite movies, man. So, shout out to that. 
Okay. Um, number three for me, man, Galaxy Quest. You know what I'm saying? It was it was a uh it was a uh parody of you know what I'm saying science fiction movie. It was basically <clears throat> a movie about these people who played in like this Star Trek esque TV show, and they end up finding out that everything uh that they did in the show end up becoming real because they end up meeting these aliens who finds this footage and think that it's basically um historic documents from the from Earth. So the aliens recreate everything in Galaxy Quest. And you know what I'm saying? They basically go get them, the 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 cast that was a part of the show. The show is called Galaxy Quest too. But they go get the cast from Galaxy Quest and basically ask them to help them um save the world. So yeah, it was a it was a crazy movie. It was funny. It starring Tim Allen, had Sigourney Weaver, Alan Rickman, Tony Shalhoub, Sam Rockwell, Daryl Mitchell, um, Justin Long, and um Corbin Blue was in this movie as a kid too. People who don't know Corbin Blue, he was the black kid with the curly afro in um high school musical. Okay, okay. Um number two, man, for me, I cheated. Yeah, so I had to cheat, I had to cheat one time. Um, but they got similarities, man. This is why I cheated. Um, we done both of these movies um, on the Viewers Anonymous. And I had to cheat for this one because I just could not leave it out, man. Um, Varsity Blues slash Any Given Sunday, man. Like, you know, me being, me being a football guy, <laughs> Varsity Blues was just one of those movies, man, um, where it, it kind of almost had me afraid to even play uh, high school football uh, mm-hmm. the way they was hitting people on there. But any given Sunday, you know what I'm saying, Willie Beeman, you know what I'm saying, slash Jamie Foxx, that was the first time I actually looked him up. Because I was like, yo, this can't be just a movie, yo. Like, it can't yeah. be. I had to look it up. And then in my research, I found out that his name is Eric Bishop, and he actually played high school football as a quarterback down in Texas. Because yep. I was like, yo, he had to be throwing this ball for real. I was like, this yeah. shit looked too good. Mm-hmm. So, um... But yeah, man. Um, I love both of those <laughs> movies. I could, I, I, I just could not leave them out, man. So I'm sorry I cheated on the list. Oh, no, I know we got, we'll let that pass, man. We make the rules, yeah. brother. Yeah, man. So I got I got to go watch the <laughs> blues at any, any given Sunday, man. For my number for two. Sure. Well, you kept them in the same vein, so you can't be mad at that. Um, all right, man. So I'm about to nerd out real quick. Um, so for me, man, my number two, which I I had a battle making this number one, but my number one for me is it overrides. Everything in 1999, of course, uh, for me at least. Um, but Star Wars, man, The Phantom Menace, you know what I'm saying? This joint here was my everything, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was I, I watched all the Star Wars as a kid and everything else. I was really into Star Wars. I loved it. But I went to go see this movie uh, with my aunt. She brought me and my little cousins to go see this movie. It was like super, super major at the time. And then like people forget like around this time, it, there has been nothing on Star Wars since like the 70s. So this was like the first Star Wars movie in like almost 20 years. And um, <clears throat> it uh, it was basically the, the origin story of Darth Vader. And, you know, what I'm saying it showed him. Well, it was the beginning of the origin story for Darth Vader. And it showed him as a kid, you know, what I'm saying it introduced the pie racing thing into uh star wars you know what i'm saying you got to learn about padme the the mother of anakin and, i mean anakin the mother of uh luke and leia um skywalker um samuel jackson was in this joint you know what i mean being one of the master jedis he was the only jedi too and, and i want to point this out he was the only jedi in that movie to have a purple lightsaber and a lot of people don't know what that means so i'm gonna break it down to you so a purple lightsaber means that you have completely mastered the art of being a Jedi. Like you have complete balance at, for being a Jedi because it's two lightsabers that they got. They got a blue one and a, uh, a green one. And those like all the colors of lightsabers represent something. So like you might see a Jedi with like a yellow lightsaber or a red lightsaber and those all mean something. But the only person with a purple one was my man, Samuel Jackson, AKA Mace Windu. You know what I'm saying? So salute to Sam Jackson for that. And you know what I'm saying? He was only, you know, he was he was the man in that one. You can't even be mad at him. Um, and he did a little fight scene in there too, of course. But um, you know what I'm saying? You got introduced to a young Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is the first time we heard of Qui-Gon Jinn. 
um, you know, uh, Ray Park, the dude who played um, uh, uh, Snake, is it Snake Eyes? And um, G.I. Joe? And his name Snake Eyes, the ninja dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is Snake, Snake Eyes. Eyes. So the dude that played Snake Eyes in, in G.I. Joe is the same dude that played Darth Maul in Phantom Menace. And they had the, the most uh, prolific fight scene I've ever seen in a movie ever. <clears throat> it showed you that that was the first time you've seen the double edge lightsaber. You know what I'm saying? That's when Darth Maul became my second favorite Sith Lord behind uh, Darth Vader, of course. But it had Natalie Portman in it. That's when I fell in love with Natalie Portman. Um, Liam Neeson, Ewan McGregor, Sam Jackson. Um, who else was in this joint? Uh, Ray Park. And then uh, it also was uh, the dude who everybody um, hated, <laughs> uh, Ahmad Best, who was the voice of Jar Jar Binks. And uh, yeah, that's uh, wow. trying to think if anybody else. No, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. My listen, two. man. My number one. Listen. I ain't gonna. I ain't. Oh man. This movie was. This movie's in. My top five, period. Um, one of the greatest performances I've seen. You had an all star cast. Let me, let, me, let me start down the list. You know what I'm saying? You had Ed O'Neill in here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You had <coughs> Michael Booker in here. You know what I'm saying? You had Queen Latifah in here. Mm-hmm. You had. At this point of her life, when I felt she looked the best, and then after this, she started looking crazy. But Angelina Jolie in here. Mm -hmm. The great Denzel Washington, the bone collector, man. Listen, Uh the bone collector was the best shit to hit the TV screens. Um, This is when, like, for, for someone to be committing crimes from a book called The Bone Collector, start taking these crimes out of these books and making them into life and having, you know what I'm saying, a young Lincoln Rhyme sitting here <coughs> figuring out, you know what I'm saying, all this type of shit. And like, this was one of those movies where I, when I really started like, yeah, I had history class and shit, but I wasn't really fascinated mm-hmm. with history yet. But one of the great things I love about the Bone Collector is when Lincoln Rhyme starts doing his, when you can see, you, sh- you can see his brain working. Mm-hmm. And what happens is they'll start showing old shit from back then, from the early 1900s and shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so they start showing all these <laughs> old pictures of, and, and it just showed you how, like, how valuable his mind was because he was on the job. He was a dude that cleaned up crime scenes and end up this uh, huge metal thing end up falling on him and completely shattering his spine. Right. So all he really had that was left was his brilliant mind. And like just seeing that type of stuff like playing out on screen, I thought it was great. Then it turned out <clears> to be <throat> the person that was that was doing all the stuff stuff to him ended up being his doctor. Mm-hmm. He'd been trying to send his dude messages forever, but the only way they was able to figure out what was going on was the young Angelina, uh, Angelina Jolie ended up stopping this train because she seen his hand sticking out of the ground. He started seeing his evidence. So this dude been doing this for months and nobody could catch on to it until she finally had did that. So, I, you know, I'm in that lane of loving crime, mystery, suspense, history, like this movie has it all, mm-hmm. and Denzel Washington is laying in the bed the whole time, and he give you one of the best performances you've seen him give, and he's in the bed the whole time. So, I just feel like, like especially that scene when they were telling him he needed to knock it off, man. He was sitting there, man. And he was going, he was crying, he was sweating, but mm-hmm. you could feel it, man. I'm telling you, I'm <laughs> hyped, man. 
Hey, hey that's bro. my shit. Hey, bro. Bro, only Denzel Washington can play a role where he bedridden and still be a good actor, bro. I'm telling you, man. Like that dude, <laughs> man. He's too good, man. He's yeah. too good, man. I'm tired of them sleeping on it. Well, nobody's sleeping on it, but you know what I mean, man. Right. Like, right. yeah, man. I look. I'm ant right now, man. Listen, I'm I'm about to. I've been trying to find it, man. I got to pay for it, man. I might pay for it, but I can't pay for it tonight, man, because Ozark back. But, mm. but anyway, the bone collector, man. That's my number one, man. <clears throat> all right, man. You know what I'm saying? All that's fine and dandy, but let's open up for the real number. Hey, you one, ain't going to disrespect like that. Come man. on, man. <laughs> Denzel Washington, cool. You know what I'm saying? You're throwing out all these big names. Angelina Jolie, Ed O'Neill. Shout out to Al Bundy. You know what I'm saying? You're throwing out Michael Rooker. You know what I mean? You're throwing out all these classic, legendary names. Forget all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's bring in some fresh talent. You know what I'm saying? Some 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 of the known unknowns. You know what I mean? Office Space, bro. The greatest movie to ever come out. I'm out of here, man. 99. <laughs> this fucking guy. Come on, bro. I I I I believe you have my stapler. Come on, bro. What are you talking about, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need you to do that. Come on, man. What are we talking about, bro? <laughs> Ron Livingston, Jennifer Aniston, you know what I'm saying? The daddy from Brady's Bunch, Gary Cole. Um, um, Who else is in this joint, bro? Paul Wilson, Orlando Jones, man. Todd Duffy, like, bro, you talking about one of the best movies to ever be made. This is it. Joe Pesci was in this. Like, this is the joint, bro. Like, this is my movie, man. This is the probably one of the best movies to be, you know what I'm saying, made as far as comedy goes. It's just it's just a great movie all the way around. You know what I'm saying? So for people who don't know nothing about Office Space, Office Space is about a dude and his three friends who basically find a way to steal from the company that they work for. And, you know what I'm saying, the main character, Ryan Livingston, um, his name is Peter in the movie. He basically gets sick of working, and he's getting tired of his boss, Bill Lumberg, who is the worst boss of all time, of course. <coughs> he's not a cool boss like Michael Scott is. He's a jerk, you know what I'm saying? And he always making that nigga work when he don't want to work and do stuff he don't want to do. And then um, his two friends, um, Samir and Michael, and the funny part is Michael's name was Michael Bolton in the movie. So that was like the running joke throughout the movie that his name was Michael Bolton, of course. Um, and then Jennifer Aniston is a girl that, you know, what I'm saying he fell in love with, of course. But the dope part, the dope thing about this movie is that it was written and directed by the creator of Beavis and Butthead that we mentioned earlier and uh, King of the Hill, my man, Mike Judge, uh, Mike Judge. So Mike Judge uh, did this movie. And this is the first time, you know, what I'm saying you see um a movie that had Cypress Hill in it too. You know what I'm saying? Cypress Hill was the, the song that they had uh playing. I think it was Insane in the Membrane, where they was beating up on the uh they stole the printer and went outside and, and destroyed the printer and they was walking <laughs> around it and shit like they was thugs. Bro, that movie is fucking hilarious, bro. Um uh Peter thought that uh Jennifer Aniston's character smashed her boss because she she dated a dude named Bill Lumberg. <laughs> so they thought he thought it was his boss. So the whole time, like he was talking to her, he could he just kept imagining his boss smashing her <laughs> and saying everything he be saying at the job. And then the one dude, um, uh, uh what is dude's name? Uh, Milton, the dude that be like, I believe you have my stapler. Him that they they was putting this nigga. He, they kept moving his uh cubicle. So, so, so every time he try to move his cubicle, he be trying to talk. But the the Bill Lumberg dude don't be paying no attention. So he be like, "Yeah, uh, Milton, we're gonna have to ask you to move to another cubicle. We're just gonna move you down here." So the whole time Bill Lumberg talk, he like, "Yes, but okay, no, um, yes, uh, but but wait a minute." Like, <laughs> <for some reason. laughs> so eventually, at the end of the at the end of the movie, this nigga is all somehow he ends up all the way in the basement. <laughs> Like it's, it's, it's a funny ass movie, bro. But basically, they they was taking um they was taking these checks that they were sending out, and then they made like a shell corporation, and they was taking like pennies out of each of these checks, and they was moving it to the shell corporation, and um <clears throat> excuse me, they was moving it to the shell corporation, and uh basically they you know what I'm saying got a nice little cut out of the deal, and you know what I'm saying they fucked off the company that they hated. So yeah, man, Office Space is the is the best movie in 1999, bro. I'm telling you, 
it's one of the movies that as an adult, especially as an adult working for a company that you don't like, like that's the movie to watch. So we stuck to our guns. Mm-hmm. Nothing in common. I told you, man. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, that's fucking funny. That was fun, man. I don't know yeah. if y'all enjoyed that or not, but I did, goddamn. So like, real quick, man, let's let's go back down our list real quick. Mine okay. is um I got Eyes Wide Shut at number five, Sleepy Hollow at number four, Galaxy Quest at number three, Star Wars The Phantom Menace, episode one at number two, and then Office Space at number one. Cool, man. For me, I got 10 Things I Hate About You at number five, Life at number four, The Wood at number three, I Cheated at number two, Varsity Blues, and Any Given Sunday, and I got The Bone Collector. For sure, man. Yes, sir. So, you know what I'm saying? Like we said, man, 1999 was a great year for film. Um, You know what I'm saying? Like as that, you know what I'm saying, said over and over again, it was, you know what I'm saying, the, the apocalypse was upon us, so they was just letting everything fly. They didn't care what movie was coming out. They were just dropping them joints. Um, <clears throat> So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's uh, We we got we might have to do this again, bro. You know what I'm saying? This is our episode, man. This is the first time we've done this, man, a year in film, 1999. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We, we might have to do this joint again. We got to find another year, man, that was like this. Yeah. Yeah, 1999 was, was the... Man, that might be like the best year. Well, I don't know. We might have to do years next time. Like after we do so many of these episodes, we might have to mess around and rank the years too, man. But oh um, man. So, you know what I'm saying? We done with it now. Let's get into this coming soon, man. You ready for that? Yes, sir, man. All right. So coming soon, man. We have um a classic, a hood classic, bro. Um, this one of the ones that, you know what I'm saying, was was brought to life. And it showed you um, the reality of life in L.A. Um, in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, it talked about gang culture. It talked about, you know, living in the hood and getting out. Um, it was a it, it's a crazy one, bro. You know, it, it was starring um, Ice Cube. Um, Cuba Gooden Jr. Cuba Gooden Jr. Oh, man, I, I don't even I can't even say his name no more. Cuba Gooden Jr., after he said what he said in that club, bro, nigga is wilding. Right. Um, who else is in the uh, more, more chestnut in this one? No, yeah, yeah, more chestnut was in this one. <coughs> Ricky, you, I know, right? Uh, one of the most horrible. <laughs> death, that, that 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 right there is top five death. Uh, in the movie. Hey, bro, the funniest the funniest thing I've ever seen on the internet. They talk about boys in the hood. This nigga said, uh, I forgot who did it. Who who? tweeted this shit, but he said, man, this nigga Ricky was on a football scholarship. <laughs> he said this nigga ran a, he said nigga was running a 4-2. He said, man, I missed him about to get shot. He said that nigga didn't think to make a cut. He was a fucking <laughs> running back. Hey, they gotta stop, man. That was a sad scene in uh, hey, cinematic, bro. cinematic no, history. Dude. That is definitely one of the worst deaths in movie history. Like, nigga, that, that has to be one of the saddest deaths in movie history, bro. But that tweet was so fucking funny to me, bro, because that shit puts everything in perspective. Like, you forget that this nigga has a scholarship to play for. Going to uh, USC. Yeah, and the um, only thing this nigga had to do was... <laughs> zigzag or something. Was drop step to the right. <laughs> He'd been straight. This is true. Oh, um, shit, man. But Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne, yep. um, Angela Bassett, yeah, like, that's this is this is they um <laughs> this is they they uh chemistry before uh what's love got to do with it? Yep, uh, <laughs> Ike Turner. Yep, but um, but yeah, man, I'm excited. We we've been holding us off for a long time, long mm-hmm. time. So so this is gonna be uh this is gonna be great, man. It's gonna be fun. Y'all keep rocking with us, man. We got ah oh, man, we got so much shit coming. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah. That's that, man. Can't wait to do that episode for real. Um, also, you know what I'm saying, for all the football fans out there, man, y'all enjoy this draft come, that's that's going on right now. Haven't forgot about that. Um, There's been some good picks. But, you know what I'm saying, that's just something we got to talk about, man, because, you know, we football fans. Anyway, um, and you, you know what I'm saying, you mentioned two football movies too. That's what also made me think of it. But, you know what I'm saying, if y'all want to talk about anything that's going on that we that we said, if y'all uh, hear a movie that we missed 
or if y'all just want to be like, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? We love your list. We hate your list. Whatever it is, man, you can hit us up on the socials. You can hit us up on IG and Twitter at View and Pod. You get us up on Facebook at VA Pod Watch Group. And as uh, far as I go, you can follow me on Twitter at Scoots Bronson. <clears throat> yeah, man, y'all can follow me at, uh, at, <clears throat> at S.Foster8 on Instagram and Twitter. At 28 Minutes or Less Pod on IG. Uh, follow the podcast on all major platforms. Last pod was Power Book 4 on uh, Force. That was on Tommy. Got something else cooking up. So be on be on the lookout uh, for the next episode of 28 Minutes or Less. For sure, man. Um, <clears throat> and as always, man, thank you guys for rocking with us. Thank you guys for the support and love. It's always greatly appreciated. And um, man, like they say in Hollywood, man, that's a wrap. Cut. Okay.